hello. Um, I'm Danny Gregory, and it is Thursday, April 2nd. Thursday. What we used to call Mini Friday back in the days when days of the week had particular significance. <laughs> um, yes, but it is Thursday, and it is another great day for drawing. So thank you all for joining me here. Um, I see that there's folks from the UK. There's some new people I'm not that familiar with here. Um, uh, Sura, Suramoga, I like that name, sending good vibes. Um, Corrine in Pasadena, Andrew in California, Deborah in North Virginia, and uh, lots of other folks Chris in Kansas City, and Jackie in Ohio. So, thanks for joining me again for a moment of, uh, I don't know, uh, let's say um, an appointment with our inner artist, opportunity to just do a drawing, relax, be calm. So today we are going to draw money. So, if you ha still have any money, get a piece of it. This is my piece of money. It's a dollar bill. I haven't used cash money for three weeks now, but I still have a few bills lying around. Um, but if you don't have cash, or the, the key to it is being able to crumple it. And it occurred to me that I'm not sure if euros are crumpleable. Can you crumple a euro? They're kind of plasticated. Maybe, they, maybe the currency where you are is plasticated too. In which case, we need to find something else. So another option is get a piece of newspaper. Um, this is actually a circular from Michael's 50% off art supply store uh, sale. I won't be using it, but so you could use that. Or you could take a, a, a bill and crumple that up. Whatever it is, it needs to be just a piece of paper that ideally has some printing on it and that we can crumple up. And I'm gonna to explain to you in a minute what is gonna involve um, what we're gonna do. So get that, get some paper, get a pen and pencil or uh, some watercolors if you wanted. We'll see. Um, but before we get into that, while you're gathering your stuff and other people are coming to join us, Let's talk about how we're feeling these days. What is our mood like? Um, you know, I find my own mood goes up and down. But there are times where things feel just overwhelming and stressful and incomprehensible. And it's hard to know where to turn to for reassurance uh, or perspective. Um, I think almost everything that happens in one's life that is new and different and alarming, um, there are things that one can go to for uh, understanding. So it might be that if you had a, a loss in your in your family, you can turn to other people who have gone through a similar experience. You can read books about it. Um, you can. Uh, you know, understand that people have gone through this before, they've survived, and you will too. Um, or you can talk to people who have some distance from it, or people who can empathize and commiserate with you, but, you know, aren't going through it themselves, so they have the strength to guide you. In our current situation, that's not really the case. It's a unique and historic, I mean, there don't really seem to be things that we can look to to explain this to ourselves. And it is absolutely uh, ubiquitous. Everybody is experiencing this. Is that the correct use of it, ubiquity? Maybe. Anyway, everybody is experiencing it. So nobody can sort of tell you otherwise, tell you um, how they got through it because they have it. That being said, we are all going through it. And we can gather strength from that, from each other. Um, and I think we're all, it's like, I mean, I've seen this with, with me and my wife, I've seen it with me and my sister, that there are times when one person's up and the other person's down, or one person's freaking and the other person is stoic. 
you know, so I think it's, we have a lot of other people who are all kind of going up and down at various times and we can try and find those people who can give us strength when we're feeling weak or people to whom we can give strength when we're not feeling right. Um, I want to show you a little film that I made yesterday um, that it's about um, my wife's search for Zen and uh, meditation. So I'm going to share it with you. Maybe it will provide some calm for you at this moment. Here we go. This is my Zen. So, yeah, so we're all um, finding serenity where we can. And it's important to have serenity. Yeah, you know, I, I've done yeah. many sessions, except I really enjoyed um, So, yes, so anyway, so, so today we're going to do an exercise for those of you who are joining a little bit late, which involves a crumpled yeah, so bill, crum, a crumpled piece of paper. It could be um, a crumpled piece of newspaper. It could be a um, credit card bill. It could be a... a piece of campaign literature, whatever it is, any piece of paper that has printing on it, ideally. You could probably even do it with a plain piece of paper, but um, there's that. And then a pen or a pen. And now I'm going to show you this little video that will uh, kind of guide you through what we're going to be doing. It's a video I made actually years ago, um, but it seemed somehow like it was a good thing to revisit. And that's what we're going to be looking at now, which is my instructional doodad. Here we go. Hey, today let's make some money. Now, take a bill. Could be a dollar, could be a euro, could be whatever you have handy. And, you know, if you look at it, it's, it's an incredibly familiar thing. But the more closely you look at it, the stranger it is, actually. Because there's all kinds of complexity built into its design so people don't forge it. Now, if you crumple it, you make it even more with it. But how do you draw it? It's so complex and unusual and unfamiliar, which is what makes it interesting to draw in the first place, right? So we're going to break it down into stages, and I'm going to use different pens to show the different sort of parts of the drawing. First of all, I'm going to do a contour drawing, which is to draw the outside edges of the entire shape of the bill. I'm using Copic multi-liner pens to draw with, and first I'm going to use the 1.0, the fattest one. But one of the lines of this bill is just very straight, and it could go on forever. How do I figure out how long it is? Well, I measure it against the part of the bill that has landmarks to it, curves and bumps. So this straight line is the equivalent of about that much of the random part. Now I can continue with confidence and draw the rest of it. Okay, so we've got our outline. Next, we're going to draw the folds. We're going to draw the inside landmarks of the bill. Now I switch to the 0.8 Copic Multiliner to draw the inside. Next, we move on to the actual 
printing on the bill itself. And because we have the landmarks breaking down the bill into sections, we can fill in those bits and pieces by looking at them carefully. So now I'm switching pens again, and I'm using the .1 Copic Multiliner. I work my way across the bill, filling in the printing as I go. It's actually getting easier because I have so many landmarks now to show my, me where I am and filling in kind of little sections that are defined by the folds. Next I add the shading across the bill. I want to be careful with my cross hatching here because if you get too heavy handed it starts to blend with the, the engraving and it's hard to tell what's printed on the bill and what is shading. Some of it's literally there, lines that are literally there on the bill and some of it is, you know, representing different degrees of halftone. Finally, I add the show that the bill is throwing onto the table. The drawing still looks a little flat to me, so I've decided I'm going to add a bit of Sumi ink. Sumi ink is, uh, comes in a hard block, solid block. Put a little bit of water onto a dish, and then you rub the stick onto it to extract some ink. The ink goes on a little heavier than I anticipated, so I blot it with a towel, and now I can see the line work underneath the tone that I've added. I want the quality of the shadow to be much darker, so I use completely undiluted ink there. So here, this whole drawing took me, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes, and that includes three different levels of pen and the Sumi ink. So you see, you can draw anything, no matter how complicated it is. You just need to have a strategy to approach it. So first, draw the outside shape of it, then determine where the landmarks are. What breaks that big shape down into smaller shapes? When you've broken down those smaller shapes, you can work within each shape to make sure that it's accurate. And again, don't drive yourself crazy trying to make something look like a photograph. That's why we have cameras. But try and have fun and try to do something that feels expressive, that, that reflects how you feel about the thing that you're drawing. This bill is, is sort of mangled, and, uh, but it's also a beautiful piece of art in and of itself. So I try to kind of reflect that feeling, to think about that while I'm drawing it. A lot of it just comes out naturally and intuitively, and everybody has their own approach. So have fun, and don't be afraid of anything. Don't be afraid of anything. Hmm. Little did I know. <laughs> All right, so um, for those of you who don't have cash sitting around, um, in solidarity with you, I'm going to be drawing this crumpled up piece of newspaper instead. So, hey, today let's make some money. Here we go. So forget about money. Let's just start. So I started, while I was talking, I started drawing. So hopefully you did too. Let's get on with it. Let's get on to doing some, some drawing here. What's nice about this exercise is um, we don't have a lot of preconceptions about what a piece of crumpled paper looks like. Oops. The wind is blowing my model. Um, as I was saying, we don't have a lot of preconceptions about what Oh no, this is kind of turned out to find my place again. Okay. You know, so it really does force us to kind of look anew at, at this object and to, you know, recognize that we don't know, um, we don't know exactly where things are supposed to go. We don't know exactly how to represent them. And it's a fresh experience. It's fresh, it's new, it's it's unfamiliar, even though it's something we've seen before. And it also has a lot of landmarks on it. You know, landmarks are the things that help us to find our way around the object. You know, if you're drawing something that's very simple, I mean, that's one of the thing, difficult things sometimes with drawing, say, a, a car that has large stretches of... Um, of the car are just a straight line or a curved line. And so it's only the parts like the hood that have a lot of um, details in them 
that help us to be anchored. And similarly with this kind of a drawing, you know, it, it's the lines, like for instance, these lines that are printed that are helping me to know where I should be on this crumpled piece of paper. It's, it's guiding me and it's giving me a way to connect one line to the next. I like to compare this sort of drawing to doing a jigsaw, not a jigsaw puzzle, well, maybe a jigsaw puzzle, but I was going to say actually a crossword puzzle. A crossword puzzle, you do one section and then you connect a word that, that goes up and down and then you do the word that, that shares a particular letter with that previous word and so forth. And that's similarly with this kind of drawing where you say, okay, this line is, I know where to go with it because this other line is near it. Drawing this outline is confusing me a bit because my paper <laughs> moved and now parts of my outline are completely inaccurate. So it isn't always necessarily the best strategy to, um, to draw your entire outline because particularly when you make kind of wonky decisions at certain points in the line, um, those decisions come back to haunt you because suddenly the wonkiness of one section, it just doesn't really hold up when you go into another section. So um, that's okay. Hopefully nobody will be evaluating this drawing based on a careful study of its subject. They'll go, wait a minute, I look back at that rumpled piece of paper, and in fact, you were completely wrong about that little shredded section there that actually curved back to the left and didn't arc to the right the way you indicated it. And that part is a bit longer than it's supposed to be. No, not gonna worry about that. We're gonna follow the Zen of Jen. And we're just going to go with what we see. I was thinking this morning that my goal in sitting with you each morning or each afternoon is to really have a moment of tranquility and uh, practice of our drawing. And I think I've gotten a bit too complex in the last few days, what with lots of videos and interviews and kind of incomprehensible drawing assignments. And so I'm going to try at least in the meantime to be clearer and simpler and focus more on drawing. Probably going to be continuing to blather through the whole thing. Can't help myself there, but we should be drawing. And I like it best when the comments subside and I know that you are out there drawing quietly to yourself. Hey, I managed to run out of pen ink. I don't know if I told you this, but um, one of my high anxieties was that because I left my home in New York without adequate preparation, that I didn't, in fact, have enough fountain pen ink with me. And it's certainly turning out to be true, but I went on to Amazon and I asked them if they could deliver some more pen uh, stuff to me. I, you know, I bought, I don't know, five or six cartridges. Well, what I thought were five or six cartridges, it turned out to be five or six boxes of cartridges. It's not expensive fountain pen ink, but um, it was delivered to me and I felt a little guilty because it was like a relatively small box that had these little tubes of ink in it but I felt kind of bad that God knows what trouble somebody had gone through to, to get that to me but um, I'm grateful that they did felt a little profligate is that the word? I don't know So now I've done basically the, from what I can see, are the main um, sections and chunks of it. And I want to go in and just start adding um, a bit of contrast. We're having some areas 
that reflect the printing on the, on the page. Birds are pretty happy today. The sun is shining here in Phoenix. It's a nice day. It's easy to get lost in this and to not know where you are in it. I keep losing my way. It's probably because I made a mistake with this whole section over here. It kind of almost isn't there really. I'm just sort of making that part up. I think I'm not gonna, even, I'm gonna just ignore it. I'm gonna ignore that part that I don't really see because it kind of came about because this paper moved and suddenly I just lost my orientation. That's fine. Doesn't really matter. I guess another question you can also ask yourself when you're doing this sort of thing is how much do you want to get into the values? Um, how, do, I mean, do, well, do you want to draw shadows? Do you, like I could draw the overall shadow of this thing that it's casting. That's sort of the shadow. You know, but do you actually um, want to go in and draw all, do all the cross hatching? I mean, you could. You could, depends on how long you want to do this. I mean, you could really spend a lot of time on this kind of a drawing. It's really, it's really quite relaxing. And again, you're not really too concerned about accuracy and likeness because it's such an abstract piece of subject matter. You know, and then we could get into like some serious kind of cross hatching here in the shadows. You could really go to town and just have that that calm, soothing meditation that comes from drawing lines one next to the other and making that little scritchy scratch sound that you get with cross hatching. You just don't even need to think when you do this kind of drawing. Just keep drawing these little lines one after the other. I feel like I'm moving into kind of a Bob Ross stage now. Yes, the magical little lines, the happy little lines. The Bob Ross uh, empire seems to have taken on a new dimension recently. I was in... Uh, the Blick Art Supply Store near our house in New York a few months ago, Kosha actually, and um, they had a life-size cutout of Bob Ross that you could pose next to. I took a picture of Kosha standing next to it, but they also have all these sort of Bob Ross coloring books and Bob Ross authorized uh, paint sets, and it's clearly like a lot of... Um, and I also saw there's, uh, I think I shared this with you guys a while ago, there was a a big um, bunch of articles in the Times, and I think there was even like a little documentary about like behind the scenes in the Bob Ross kind of, um, what's it called, the Bob Ross Foundation, I think it is. And the question that, that prompted this article was, can you buy a Bob Ross original? Because you think he made so many paintings, you think, well, sure, somewhere you could buy a Bob Ross. Turns out you can't really. You can't really buy a Bob Ross original because they're all kept in this foundation, in boxes. And apparently what he would do is every time he did an episode of the show, he did three identical paintings. He did one that he would paint on the show itself. He did one that he would kind of show at the beginning that was like, this is what the painting is going to be like. And uh, I think what the other one was. But so they would have these boxes of these near identical paintings stacked in like corners of this sort of warehouse there. Not because they were particularly valuable, but it was just sort of like, yeah, they kind of saw the paintings almost as like props that were part of the production. And uh, it never really occurred to them that anybody that they should buy, sell them or anything. And I think they still haven't. Um, so, yeah, so... You'd have to paint your own Bob Ross, which is actually kind of better, right? If you, like, if you want this painting so much, then just watch the show 
and do your own version of it. Why not? Should be able to. That's what he's. That's why he's teaching you. Right? Although I bet you, the percentage of people who watch one of those episodes, what was it called? The Joy of Painting, I think, and who actually did it, did the painting to completion. Can you imagine how small that number is? But it would be cool to see like a, an exhibit of all the different interpretations of, you know, one given Bob Ross, you know, like take a particular episode and then have like hundreds of paintings that people had done over the years based on that of some kind of cabin in the woods surrounded by pine trees or whatever. He died quite young, Bob Ross. You know, I think his his effect has you know been long after his death, and uh, not his effect on the art world probably, but certainly his ability to provide a calm experience um, has has lasted for a long time. I think. People like to just sit and listen to him, and I don't know. I guess you can now binge watch episodes of Bob Ross. I think on Netflix. Strange, right? Strange situation. All right. There you go. Can I zoom in on this a little bit? Want to do that. There you go. That's better if I should have had it like that in the beginning, from the beginning. But yeah, so that's my drawing. As you can see, the light is moving, the sun is rising. I'm getting in and out of shadow. But there you have it. What's going on out here in uh, among in command land? Let's see what you guys are up to. Um, Oh, thank you. Thanks. A bit better. You will move over here a bit more. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. One of these days, I'm going to get like a giant scrim. Is that going to fall on me and punk me on the head? All right. Well, that'll be interesting. That'll be the, the dramatic highlight of this uh, particular experience. <laughs> what yours looks like so yeah so paper money you know I don't know how you're feeling about money these days I'm not really thinking about it it's a sort of I don't know I feel like we have to live right now you know, I don't know what the, what what's coming up so what are you doing putting all right, so hopefully that there's a giant plank that they've set up over there so it doesn't hit me in the head. Um, anyway, so there just hasn't been really a lot of use for paper currency. It sort of feels, I mean, we've always been told that money is kind of, you know, it's teeming with germs. Like I remember my grandmother telling me that when I was like five years old, don't touch that. It's, you don't know where it's been. But... Um, you know, and nowadays we have, I remember my son was going to buy gas with his credit card. He's like, do you think it's safe to put my credit card in the slot? I said, I guess. I mean, wear a glove, put it in the slot, wipe it before you put it back in your wallet. I don't know the limits to which we can go. You know, anxiety about it, you know. Pay with your watch. I don't know. Um, but for now... Pens are cheap, paper's cheap. Let's just try and keep drawing. I don't really have better advice on, on financial matters for you than that. But, you know, I think, um, I think it's, it is very important to give yourself a break these days. I saw several articles in the New York Times today that were saying, like, don't feel like you have to be hyper busy because you have spare time. Don't feel like you need to like, 
you know, do all your chores and deal with all the things that you've left unattended to because, you know, look after yourself, you know, um, be well, get through this. And it's true. You know, I think it, it's very, very difficult to think about the future. So try and be calm in the present and don't try and try and dial back, I guess, our relentless desire to sort of, you know, get on with it because there's no, no, that's not really a practical consideration right now, getting on with it. But I think trying to be calm, trying to be positive, trying to find beauty around you, trying to be with others in whatever way you can, in a gentle and caring way, you know, it sounds kind of eerie, it sounds a little woo-woo, but I don't know, I think that's the right attitude, wherever you can find it, and what can you read, what can you listen to, what can you watch that reasserts that, you know, confirms that, feels calm, feels big in the sense of connecting you to the things that actually matter in life um, and really trying to avoid thinking about what might be. I think that that's the one thing that I've learned from the various other things that have happened to me in my life that were life shattering and traumatic. There have been a number of them. Um, was that the thing that was hardest was thinking about the future. And I look back in retrospect at the thoughts that I was having back then. And I realize how misguided they were. I spent a lot of time thinking about how was I going to deal with this future I didn't understand. And trying to devise ideas about what it would be like, and strategies for how to deal with that invention of mine. So for instance, when my wife, um, my first wife, Patty, was disabled, and she ended up in a wheelchair, and I knew nothing about the world of disability, and I spent a lot of time trying to imagine that life that we would have, and trying to uh, assert control over it, prepare for it. I need to realize, when I look back on it, that I had no idea what it was going to be like. And then in some ways it was worse than I thought, and in many ways it was better. And that all the thinking that I had done about it, all the movies that I had made that were running in my head about what it would be like, were useless, and most of them made me unhappy. And the same thing happened, I don't know, during 9-11, and it happened during Hurricane Sandy, it happened when Patty passed away, it happened during the financial crisis, it happened, blah, 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 blah. It happens, these things happen, and we can't really understand them. And we can look to experts, we can read newspaper articles and blog posts and watch videos about people prognosticating about what they think it's going to be like. But they're, they don't know either. And so what we do know about is now. I know that there's sunshine. I know that there's friends drawing with me. I know that there's birds. How can I spend the time in this more pleasant place rather than in that unpleasant future or in that misty past? And I think drawing a crumpled piece of paper is one way of doing that. I'm just saying, I'm going to be here now. Because I'm alive. It's okay. I have a computer. I have an internet connection. It could be worse. And I'm not going to think about how it could be worse. I'm just going to be here now. So that's what I hope for you. That's what I hope for me. Um, you know, the oh no, what could be, what will be, what if, what if. If I can't do anything about it, you know. And it's not denial. It's a refusal to engage. You know, I remember a long time reading this this book on on, uh, on Buddhism. One of the things that the Buddha said was, you know, it's a 
it's a cliche and a bumper sticker now, but it's, I think one of the most relevant pieces of philosophy I've experienced is pain is inevitable and suffering is optional. Suffering is our response to pain, but it's a form of pain as well that we create and we can choose not to pursue it, not to indulge our amazing creative faculties and our power of our imagination rather than using it to create this artificial vision of the future, use it instead to engage with the present and to make something, to make something with somebody else um, share in this moment. So anyway, thus ends today's sermon from the backyard. Sorry if I've been Thanks for being here. Um, you guys uh, give structure to my day. I look forward to spending time with you. And uh, I look forward to drawing with you again tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. And uh, I have an idea for what we'll do then, which I think will be fun and interesting. I'll let you know about it then. I apologize if you've had a bit of difficulty finding me today. Um, I'll spend another bit of time working on how we can streamline this process. Morgan, thank you for helping me um, in figuring this out, and we will do it. We will be here tomorrow, one of many places. And I tend to try and start things slowly so that you can catch up and join me, just in case you're looking for art supplies or trying to find places to, to draw and we can take it together. Okay, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Have a great day.